to present my paper. I'm going to um, to start uh, presenting uh, an overview about travel writing, Portuguese travel writing, and the, the topic of uh, Iran Safavid's um, presence in travel writing and specifically in uh, historiography uh, texts. The analysis of Safavid Iran's presence in Portuguese travel writing requires an identification of the conceptual tools that stand at his scores. Two previous notes must thus be made. The first lies on the identification of Tsefavid's geographical imperial domain, as it was reported in 16 and 17 Portuguese travel writing, which implies a second aspect. The confines of the historical time we are dealing with, the, uh, the one that lies between Shah Ismail I, uh, 1501-24, and Shah Suleiman I, 1666 and 94, until 94, that it was the rules of those, those two um, shots. Sean King and Charles Melville anchored their essays on Safavid historiography in a timeline between Shah Ismail I and Shah Sultan Hussein. So it's middle of the 18th century. Yet, one must bear in mind that there is a stereographical analysis, and mine, although it ponders on this theoretical field, expanded with a focus on travel writing. Why? I shall try to answer this question in the next few moments, I hope so. Travel writing has been understood as a microsystem that incorporates different kinds of textual discourses. Last year, Shani Aaron Legacy synthesizes the main contributions to this analytic, to this analytic field and declares that, quote, developing a working definition of travel writing is a rite of passage for all studies on the subject. Quote. She further claimed the research on this topic. Quote, Facing the task of explaining which titles have been included or, and which excluded, whether fictional or pseudo historical works should be considered alongside letters and diaries, which texts should be grouped together and on what grounds, and so forth. This is not as a, a mere exercise in order to frame different forms of writing, since it also helps to understand biographical intentions, contact networks, cultural atmospheres that hopefully unveil the reading of a time, 16th and 17th centuries, and records of, its, of a reference, Safavid Zirans. Although I agree with Peter Wolm and Tim Youngs when they write that, well, the travel tale is old as fiction itself. During the 16th century, writing, writing excuse me, became an essential part of traveling, end quote. This time frame, namely in Western Europe, implies a change in the discursive models that support textual representations both in the encounters with other cultural horizons and in the creation of presence networks. The unfolding of new empires implies different kinds of textual records, where fictionality doesn't emerge as primary goal and where the writing of history function as a tool of imperial legitimation. In their essay on the Persian space, Shulman King and George Melville claimed that Safavid historiography also functions as legitimation of power. They say, initially, Safavid legitimation rests on three main pillars. Safavid King promote their right to rule one on the basis of descent from Musa al-Kazam. Two, 
has the head of the Safavid Safi order. Three, has the shadow of her God on her in line with pro-Islamic Persian notions of kingship. And quote. Lack has returned to travel writing and to the relevance of 15th and 16th centuries imperial frames within Europe, Asia, America and Africa. The time I have been assigned doesn't allow me to develop these concepts, their relationship with geographical identities and their composite mythographies. Since our is an analysis of the discursive topoi that emerge in the description of Iran Safavid Persia, we must bear in mind the binomial Europe, Christianity or Asian East. I follow Balkin's notion of topoi, which in his view are similar to quote boxes into which situation and events can be placed, located, categorized and organized in their proper places. Places in the mind, as Aristotle suggested, from which different, uh, different arguments might be facts, perspectives or ways of looking at things." End quote. Yet, one must bear in mind that in order to perceive these writing models, one must remind the relevance of the asymmetry between space and time. I follow Vladimir Jakolevsky when he claims that space welcomes all the coexistence in what we consider to be the juxtaposition of its coexistence, thus offering a simultaneous synoptic insight. Freedom of movement somehow mitigates places, different places, since made the alternative fluids and the moments may turn out to be possible too. If one reminds of travel writing discursive structure with the Portuguese example has background, for instance, the historiography about the empire and above all the expansion chroniclers, we realize that its architecture lies on the, a circular representation of time, where Asia East is the primordial structure concept. A time whose moments are the ones of the viceroy, just, just opposed with the army's flows, as one may see in Fernão Lopes de Castanheira, the story of the discovery and conquest of India by the Portuguese, in Gaspar de Correia, the legends of India, João de Barros, Asia, Asia, all of them uh, writing during the 16th century, and João Batista Lavanha, António do Carro, and or excuse me, Diogo do Couto, who will write in the following century and also about Asia. In the articulation between this synoptic simultaneous approach, there are, however, signs, images and symbols which run along the different author's texts. There's a, a, along with concepts and mythographies of Europe, Christianity or Asia East, one must oppose in this travel writing grammar categories like memory or empire. These categories concur with the hermeneutic reading of an imperial imaginary, namely a Portuguese one. The concept of empire is not, as I have broadly affirmed, static, since it reconfigures itself plastic and organically according to the circumstances that form structures and compose it. In the Portuguese case, signs such as cross, the crown and sphere emblematically mark the 16th century monarch, monarch's agenda in both European and extra-European areas. King Manuel symbolically embodied it, taking King John III, Sebastian I, and Philip II of Spain, first of Portugal, the universal sign. It is precisely through the binomial history and memory, 
with its signs as participants that a writing of history is forged. We must notice the fact that this is a time when prevails the Aristotelian approaches. Thus, the poet represents what could happen according to the principle of truth and necessity, eventually narrating what could have happened. And the historian says, mm, excuse me, what happened. Both textual approaches, the poetic and historical one, distinguish themselves by the fictionality they, that they hang or not to attend. Travel writing, a hybrid record, can at the same time represent what happened or could happen. Its guiding treat is the way through which one represents and models another world, starting from the known, just opposing differences and contracts, describing others, customs, and veiling cultural ambiences. According to Hendrik van Gorp, les distensions et les contrastes, la vérité, font l'objet d'une perception brute et quasi purement quantitatif. Le monde observé se désagrège en choses isolées, en phénomènes, en événements qui sont juste opposés ou qui se succèdent. This is uh, the principle that underlines travel writing and writing of his, from, excuse me. This is the principle that underlies travel writing and writing of history from which it emerged. In the Portuguese case, when we analyze history, history writing, we must have in mind two categories the historiographical connected with the king's ruling, which legitimized a dynastic succession, thus validating its true history. Let me to recall how, in the Safavid historiography, the question of dynastic legitimation arises. Although briefly, I put forward some of the vectors pointed out by Shirley Quinn and George Melville. First idea. Most of the chronicles produced in the Safavid period before the reign of Shah Abbas fall in the category of general or universal history. We may be able to explain the prevalence of universal histories in terms of political legit legitimacy. Formative Safavid historiography with roots in the Timurid and Mongol traditions inherited Turco-Mongol legitimizing notions of universal rule. Second aspect. Thus, as time passed, says um, Melville, an increasing number of works were dynastic rather than the general, true, universal history, histories of the early period. Eventually, as the dynasty gradually began to appear more secure and unlikely to collapse, its historiography appears to have become less reliant on the pre past. It had a well-established history which had already undergone numerous revisions during the reign of early Safavid kings, in particular Shah Tamasp. There are thus enough Safavid history to justify a lengthy volume devoted to the reigns of the Safavid kings alone. Third and last idea. Nostalgia for the past that, go, that goes through some texts right, written during the reign of the Shah Suleiman. These mostly anonymous stories narrated the reigns of Shah Ismail and Shah Tamas. In the process of designing models of writing history that inform travel writing, one must compare objectives, evolutions, disseminations, hopefully increasingly understand the space as topoi that welcomes coexistence and different places, as Vladimir Jankalevsky has pointed out. Notice, for instance, uh, Nicolau uh, de Huerta Rebelo's travel record. 
1607, and his description of Shiraz. Pedro Teixeira reports and his description of the history of Prussia and Duarte Barbosa or Tomé Pires almost, I, I say that it's it really ghostly enunciations of Prussia. But let's return to the Portuguese case and to the second category I considered in the writing of history and Acme are out in Portugal. This category is the historiography, the, is the historiography on the empire, which contemplates the expansion chronicles and the general histories on imperial dominion, the biographical chronicles, the memorial discourses, <coughs> author discourses, epistolographies, thematic discourses. I use Foucault's definition of discourse. It is exactly in this categorization of empire historiography that I will stick to the top by Safavi Duran in our writing of history as a participant in travel writing. Bear in mind my previous comments about Nicolau de Horta or Pedro Teixeira. Please remember that this is still an ongoing investigation research and that what I bring here is the current state of my research. Thus, I immediately signed the different texts where the Safavid Topoi flows. Uh, Safavid Uran Topoi flows. Sometimes deleted in the central corpus of this course occur, occur in the history of the empire. Lame, namely in what I consider to be a macro category that of the expansion and general histories. Namely, Fernando Lopes de Castaneda history, João de Barros Asia, Asia, excuse me, and Diogo de Cotos, or general histories like Antonio Galvão's history of discoveries, 15th century, or Friar Manuel dos Anjos' universal history, 17th century. From this proto-survey, uh, it's not very, very uh, easy to, 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 to read, but I, afterwards we can speak more about it, and I continue. From this proto-survey, it should be noted that by taking the Safavi Duran Topoi, Porsche will integrate as a border space, and hopefully of negotiation, confrontation, the records of the expansion chronicles and of general histories. With the permanence and frequency of contacts, the historiographic discourses of contacts will, with this space, eventually are specified. And we can see it there in the, in the 17th century. Notice the texts about the embassies has Fray Belchior dos Anjos Relación de la Embaixa de la, de la Jornada de Don García da Silva Embajador da Persia Dada por Frei Melchior, or even the memorial speech of Gregorio Pereira Fidalgos when he writes to reports about his 1697 embassy to Persia. One of the central nuclei, it's undoubtedly the narrative of the successes and misfortunes of religion missions in Sephardic Persia. The narrative of what happened with the presence of the Carmelites or the Augustinians stands out by the quantity and by the way it revisits the presence and permanence in Persian lands. It is interesting to note not only the reference to the missionary action but also the account of the historical events that Persia would then experience. Paradigmatic of this idea is Friar Antoine de Golvaier's uh, relation, uh, relation, excuse me, relação em que se tratam as guerras e grandes vitórias que alcançou o grande rei da Pérsia, Shah Abbas, do Grão Turkmen e seu filho, as quais resultaram das embaixadas por mando da católica e real majestade 
Dom Filipe II de Portugal fizeram alguns religiosos da Ordem dos Irimitas de São Tapestum. 1611. Excuse me. 1611? Yeah, I think so. In short, these were some of the connections that need to be deepened. Revisiting authors, texts and contexts of the time, understanding uh, history and its historiography means unveiling a space, it's a space which has topos, topo, welcomes coexistence and different places, ours, that of a common history we welcome and we hope to speak more in this conference. Thank you very much. <laughs>